Hello. I wanted to follow up with my last video and talk about contributing factors to where I am mentally right now. And uh, first, I just want to state that I am not seeking pity. I never want people to feel sorry for me. That's not what this is about. This is about maybe other people are feeling the same way and they come across this and they realize that they're not alone because when I was in infusion the other day, I felt really validated because the man next to me was talking to the social worker, which is also my counselor. And he said almost word for word what I told my husband a few days before. And that is, my, the best part of my day is going to sleep. The worst part of my day is waking up. Some days I can't do it. Some days I do absolutely nothing. And don't get me wrong, I'm not suicidal, but... Some days I don't want to do all this anymore, and I wish for a swift death. And um, he said almost exactly that, and that's what I told my husband, because lately I've just been kind of, ugh, there, there's no word for it. Maybe there is, but I don't know it. I'm not happy. I'm not sad. I'm not mad. But he sees the look on my face, and he thinks that I'm mad at him, and um, he doesn't understand what's going on in my head. And it's just my emotions are very limited right now. And maybe I think it's a coping mechanism. Um, but I do clearly have anxiety, depression, PTSD, um, and a lot of fatigue that may be caused by those things, but also from my treatment. So my mental, my mentality is different right now. I am not me. I know it. Now my husband knows it. And my doctors know, and I do have a counselor. I am being looked after. I will be okay. So please don't worry about me. But I wanted to talk about things that got me to this place. And why am I talking about these things? Because it does help me get them out. I'm a person that normally feels better by helping other people. But that hasn't been me lately. I've had to cut back on who I'm helping. I've reached burnout. And um, it's not helping me most of the time. There are a couple of people that I still talk to all the time that I'm helping through things. But um, I'm just not able to help at my normal capacity. And that's who I am. So right now I'm just not myself. And I know it and I'm trying to get back there. But I don't know how much time I have here. Nobody really does. But I just know I don't want to waste it feeling what I'm feeling right now. So hopefully these meds help me. What led me to this place or what are things that knocked me back? Um, number one is when I broke my leg and ankle. Um, I had been nine months recovered or maybe a little further along from CRS and HIPEC. And I was feeling better than ever in my life and very physically active. And I was keeping up with my husband, which uh, nobody knows my husband because he's very quiet and private. But um, my family knows him and nobody keeps up with my husband. He is like the busiest person I've ever met in my life. And I was actually, for the most part, keeping up with him. <laughs> and um, then that happened. And to be forced on two months of bed rest and confined to a wheelchair really took a toll on me. Having to ask for help really affected me. And at one point I was stubborn and I tried to cook my own macaroni and cheese and I burnt the crap out of my hand with the hot water. And I just, I've been off. I, I've been really just um, clumsy. I can't remember what the other word is, but just not myself, not coordinated. That's the word. So that was a really hard thing for me to get through. And then I received this envelope from Medicare about being switched from Medicaid to Medicare because I've been on disability for the two years. And once you've been on disability uh, that long, they switch you over. And um, just all of the words just kind of blurred together and change. I don't handle change very well. And that really stressed me out. So I've been putting it off for a couple of months, but um, last night I woke up in the middle of the night with my jaw clenched tighter than ever before. And I decided today I had to get that taken care of. So I did my research this morning. I chose my plans and supplements and I reached out to my insurance agent. And so that is done. Thank goodness. 
Another thing that led me here was uh, finding hay. I have goats and around here, marijuana is legal. We have a lot of illegal grows as well as legal grows, um, but it's caused issue with our issues with everybody's water because there's so many growers and um, they have been doing aerial views and shutting down the illegal farms, thank goodness. But um, because of that, because it's so like, it's just taken over everything nobody's growing food or hay and finding hay for your livestock is nearly impossible there have been a lot of wildfires so in other areas where they used to bring in hay it's just impossible to find hay there were two maybe three growers that i found this year and their prices uh, more than tripled what it normally is for me so um, when i found hay um, i had I had to jump on it so and it's also at a point where if you don't get enough for a whole year you may not be able to feed your livestock so I had to buy enough for a year um, that is done but it, it was very stressful so and why 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 did I mention the marijuana it's because the the growers have come in here and they have offered all of the people that lease their lands and some that don't normally even lease their lands massive amounts of money and priced out the hay farmers. So the hay farmers could not find any, any lots to lease to grow the hay that they could afford. And um, so yeah, there's just no hay around here. Um, we also had lightning and fires and we had not one but two right behind our house. And the federally managed lands have not been managed. We have reached out several times to get a permit to clean it up ourselves with no response. So it's very dangerous back there. There are supposed to be BLM roads that are open for this um, reason and they are completely overgrown. You can't even hike on them. And um, so I'm pretty pissed about that and um, <laughs> They uh, had to bring in helicopters and they had smoke jumpers that parachuted down that were out there tending to it and they stayed there until the fire was contained and out. Um, but that was really scary. We are always ready to bug out if we need to. So, um, but because of that, this happened four to five consecutive days in a row and one of them was our anniversary. We just had our 22nd anniversary. Uh, we decided not to leave. We were going to go to the coast, but it was too scary. I'm willing, I'm, I can accept losing the house and material things, but I cannot accept losing our animals. And so at this time of year, there's always one of us here to make sure if something happens, we can get them out. So we didn't go to the coast. And also on our anniversary that morning, I found out that um, a good friend for my support group that has been one of my number one supports and friends through all of this passed away and he told me about a month before that he was pretty much ready to go um, so there was a little heads up but his wife was not aware of how he felt and she reached out to me and that broke my heart and then when I found out that he did pass away it just um him on top of daily notices in the support groups um, and another good friend that I lost a few months ago um, are just, it's, I'm grieving. So um, that's been really hard on me. I also had a CT scan that um, I had planned on after this scan, it's time to reach out to other teams for further surgery. Um, that means finding out whether or not I'm a candidate at all, which is scary. Um, but that scan is done. Things are stable and due to the state of COVID, I don't know if any surgeries will be performed right now anyway, so I'm going to wait a little bit longer. I am taking a risk, but um, that's what I have to do. My other biggest thing is people and society in general, and I've had a hard time setting boundaries. So I've always felt when somebody messaged me or called me or texted me, I always felt pressure that I had to reply right away, and I still do to some extent, but I've learned that if I'm not up for answering a phone call, don't answer it. And usually it's my mom, <laughs> and um, she's just a very 
talkative person and I can't handle all the words. So I've learned now that if she calls and if I'm not ready to answer, to just text her and say, I'm, I'm not up for talking today. And she's doing really well with that. And she's giving me my space, which I really need. Um, I've also been pressured into going to a family event where people started talking and saying disgusting things, in my opinion, about people that don't believe in what they believe in. And that just confirmed right then and there that I don't really need to be around anybody that I don't want to be around, especially toxic people. So... Um, I'm just learning a lot. Somebody sent me a book about boundaries. I'll put the book title below and I recommend this book for everybody in the world. Um, so I'm doing what I can to protect myself and to get through this and to find peace in every moment that I possibly can. And um, anyway, so I don't know if I'm going to do any videos for a little while, but when I'm ready, I'll get back to it. If there's anything you want me to talk about, let me know and I will consider talking about it. Bye.